Dan Merle is back to talk about Barbarian with me. If you're not already following him on his channel, you definitely should be because he's a really smart dude. <laughs> um, if you're not subscribed to us yet, we'd love to have you here for movie news and reviews and all the good stuff like Barbarian. Um, we're going to try and talk about this in the most spoiler-free way possible. Part of the allure, I'm sure, for both of us is knowing nothing, having gone in cold, right? 100%. Yeah. This is 476 Barbary, right? Yeah, I'm renting this place. No, I booked it a month ago. Are you sure you have the right place? Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Why don't you come inside? I did not know anything about this movie, partially because it's a small movie. It flew under the radar. Yeah. And also because the people that did see it early were very wonderful, kind, lovely people. And they basically just said, I saw this movie called Barbarian. Don't read about it and go see it. And I did what they said. And then I said the same thing. Well, you found a really tricky line between saying why it's awesome without saying a single thing about it. So can you please do that here as well? Sure. Uh, what I will say is that Barbarian is about a young woman named Tess, who's played by Georgina Campbell, mm -hmm. who shows up at an Airbnb and finds out that there's somebody already staying there, who's played by Bill Skarsgård. And then it goes from there. I mean, that's literally the, the first two minutes of the movie, but that's also kind of the beauty of it is, and the way that I described it is just based off of that description. If you think you know where the movie is going, you're wrong. You yeah. are 100% wrong because there is no predicting. Even in the middle of this movie, I didn't know where we were going. I give it so much credit for giving us credit, right? For taking us down different paths and trusting that we'll go along even when things shift really yeah. abruptly. Very um, abruptly. So I will say this almost feels like three short films and then they get beautifully woven together. It all makes sense by the end. But the the writer-director, Zach Kreger, gives us a whole lot of credit for, for following along and not hand-holding. And think about how many horror films we see where it's just formula and it's beats we know. And here they they let us come along for this exciting, crazy ride without holding our hands. Right. And and I think that that's really, um, it's a risky movie. Mm -hmm. And I always say that I love risky movies because some, even if they don't always work, they're at least interesting. And this to me was a risk that paid off because you're right. There is no hand holding. The movie doesn't you know, kind of like rub your shoulders and say like, don't worry this, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out. You're just thrown into this thing. Uh -huh. And like I said, you're, you're going along a certain path and then you just turn around a blind corner and everything changes and you're like, mm -hmm. what? And you have <laughs> no idea how this ties in until later on in the movie. And, you know, you just have to trust the movie to do what it does. And it could have all fallen apart. It could have just been a disaster. You know, like they're trying something narratively that's weird right. and then they can't tie it all together. But the right. fact that they do, I think, is a is a huge credit to the film. Yeah, it's in, it's in the script and it's in the editing, right? Because yeah. it could have been like, here's a thing and here's a thing and here's a thing and good luck. But it's so masterfully done and it's hilarious. Like it's incredibly tense and incredibly gross and legitimately suspenseful and terrifying. But I also laugh my ass off. Oh, yeah. And and Justin <laughs> Long, who is in the movie. I will say that Justin Long right. is in the movie. We know this. I won't yeah. say how, when or where he shows up. Nope. Uh, but he is a driver of a lot of that comedy. And uh, he also was, I mean, all the performances in this movie are great. Sure. But uh, I, I for, for me, I thought with him, this was kind of a different, it, it sort of was in his wheelhouse, but it also sort of wasn't character wise. And yeah. um, I think he got to kind of flex and show some sides to, to himself as an actor that we may not have seen before. Right. He kind of plays with the boyish likability that he has come to embody and he finds a different shading to that which is fun and then the whole beginning with Georgina Campbell and Bill Skarsgård like that is just this dance this tense dance that you don't know where it's going to go you think you do and you don't and then like the last moment the absolute the, the song that plays when the credits begin I laughed my ass off it is. It's it's like a it is like a roller coaster ride. And that's kind of the moment I described it in my review, the moment where the roller coaster screeches to a stop and you realize you made it to the end. And there's just this <laughs> tension valve release of just like it's over and like you're glad, but also not glad. Like it's it's the perfect length. If it had jolted you around too much, mm -hmm. I think it would get a little tiresome. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's the perfect length and it pushes the bounds of like comedy, horror. Sometimes it goes way too far, but then it's able to pull back. It's mm-hmm. it 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 really could have gone wrong in a lot of different ways and it and it doesn't. You know, I was kind of surprised when the cinema score came out. Oh. That it got a C plus. Oh. But I also think it's because it is so unexpected in right. so many ways that a lot of people are like, wait a minute, what is this? Because that's what cinema score is. It's about expectation. Oh. And there's literally no way to set an audience expectation for this movie. Oh, it is very challenging, but that's what we love about it. And I think that's what horror fans will love about it because it is so unexpected. Um, That's really, really funny. That's, that's too bad. (laughs) I mean, it's, it didn't break my heart. Like, you know, when hereditary came out and got like a D so, you know, it's, it's uh, for a horror movie, actually the C plus isn't so bad on the sliding scale of cinema score. Some of the most interesting films ever made got F's right. Like mother. Like it's I'd rather go see movie, an yeah. F cinema score movie anytime versus like the same old stuff. <laughs> well, because there's, if a movie gets an F cinema score, there's something interesting about mm-hmm. it. It may be horrible, but it's at least interesting. Um, and, you know, I, I think what we need, and I've said it before, is we need more studios that'll take risks on movies like this because mm-hmm. I think it's one that pays off creatively. And then, you know, I'm curious to see how it holds up box office wise because I think word of mouth, cinema score notwithstanding, yeah. is going to be pretty strong on this. I, I certainly had a lot of people on social media say, oh, hey, I saw your tweets about this movie and I dropped everything and went to see it because that's what people are saying. So we'll see if that continues to play out. And that's fun this time of year when it's like fall movie season and everything isn't serious and it matters and all that. One of our commenters said um, that he went and saw it and he doesn't understand why it's called Barbarian. And without giving anything away, I think it's really clear thematically what they're going for with that. Thematically, and then there's a little detail in the movie as well that's easy to miss that kind of plays with it as well. Um, but yes, I, th- I think that there's a canonical uh, explanation and also thematically an explanation. Okay. Well, we're going to leave it there then. You guys can yeah. figure it out. If you saw it, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear your thoughts as well. So please, please make sure that you comment and chime in. Dan, what's your number? My phone number? Oh, uh, no, <laughs> sorry. I don't give that information out. It's no, uh, it's, it's tough because, you know, it's, I gave it an 8.8, but you could push me up to a nine easily. I'm going to say nine. This might end up being on my top 10 list this year. It's really good. And in a year of great horror movies, this one stands out. And Pearl comes out this week. And Pearl is rad. I'm so excited to see Pearl because I liked X a lot. Yes. This is if Douglas Sirk made a slasher film, it'd be Pearl. Anyway, you're awesome, Dan. Thanks for coming. See you soon, I hope.